previously on the so <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, let's move forward. I think it's fun. What kind of place is this? And sadly, that's not the only problem. In terms of collision, <laughs> Oh, that's cool. I didn't want this to be easy anyway. And now we've reached Ares Island. This open zone is full of sand dunes and canyons for you to run through. As soon as you start playing in this island, you'll notice that's a lot more open than Kronos Island. Not only that, but there's a bunch of new enemies here too. One of my favorites is this spring enemy here. By far the most satisfying enemy to kill in the entire franchise. Copy! But then there's this enemy here. Stay away from it. If you go anywhere near it, it'll take away the camera and your field of view is completely gone. God damn it. Fuck! And then there's also the shark enemy. At first, I thought this was a pretty cool mini boss, but the entire chase section goes on for far too long. I don't like fighting against this one. And then there's Strider, which I think is alright, but I think it just takes far too long to get to the middle of him. But if you don't do enough damage, then you have to redo the process, but even harder this time, with projectiles that are trying to hit you as you grind around him. But if you're able to defeat Strider in the time you have, it's really satisfying. I had a thrill trying to kill it as fast as I could. Alright. Oh, fuck. I, sh shit. Fucking get him. Fuck. Okay. Fu uh, oh, shit. Uh, what the fuck? However, I think the next mini boss might just be the best one in the game. The sumo mini boss was super fun. Once you approach this guardian, these guardrails form out of the ground, and you have to figure out what exactly you're supposed to do to hit him. Once you either homing attack him or the guardrails, he'll launch you into the fence, and then you have to ricochet off of all the walls, just like in the Sonic movie. But then once you hit him and rocket him into the electric fence, you're able to unleash a bunch of attacks on him until he's defeated. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, whoa, whoa. The fuck? Oh, okay, finally. Let's do it again. And, and, yeah. This game fucking sucks. But to get back on the topic of exploration, I think this, out of all five islands, is the most fun to run through. This massive desert is so vast and open, and finding little secrets and caverns to explore is super fun. There's even this underground section that looks super cool. Sonic, what is wrong with your legs? And actually, Frontier's exploration reminds me of a Sonic game we got a couple years back. Oh, come on, you all know the game. <laughs> But once you run around for a little bit, the titan of this area chases after you, after Sage orders it to. This little chase segment was actually really fun, running away from all these missiles as you escape from this big centipede looking thing, so you finally make it to a safe spot. What's weird though, is that immediately after you escape from Wyvern, you can just talk to Sage in the open world. This was a thing on Kronos too, and I just don't understand why. It's kind of awkward just talking to them after that, but anyways. After you escape from Wyvern, you'll have another incentive to go to the cyberspace portals. And I gotta say, the cyberspace levels in Ares Island are a lot better than the ones on Kronos. I found the level that was based on Skyrail from Sonic Adventure 2 to be a ton of fun. Something I want to mention is that there's this one cyberspace portal that's next to this grassy area that has some ponds in it. And for some reason, this area in particular really stood out to me. It looked really nice. However, something that I don't think is neat about Ares Island is the mission where you have to save the Cocos. For some reason, the Cocos are like under these death spike pillar things and you have to save them. And the more you get, the faster you go and just... Uh... All right, all right, let's go. All right. Oh, okay, okay. Got you. Okay, you two. Okay, okay, you. Yep. Let's go. You two. All right, all right. All right, let's fucking go. Fuck. No more messing around. I can save you all. Oh my god. God damn. What am I even supposed to do here? I'm gonna go ahead. Another thing about Ares Island that I'm not really a fan of, similar to Kronos, is the pop-in. I wouldn't say it's as bad as Kronos, because at least with Ares, it's all sand, which means there isn't really anything to load in when it comes to ground terrain. But the way all these tiles and platforms keep just popping into existence right in front of you, you can get used to it, but it does take you out of it pretty frequently. You know what I find weird about Ares Island? It has both a Coco mission, where you have to, like, push the Cocos towards Knuckles, and this time they actually shoot, like, smoke bombs, which I think was actually a pretty good challenge. And there's also the mission where you save the Cocos from the spike thingies, which you just saw me lose my shit at. But then there's also a mission where you have to just defeat four towers. Nothing really happens after it, so I don't think it really needed to be there, but 
it's there. But I mean, hey, this is actually how I learned that you can not only run up tower, but when you're on the top of his head, stomping is one of the best things that you can do to defeat it. So really, I do think this mission was fun. I just don't really understand why it's here. But anyway, back to positives. The potential for rail launching is super high here. You can pull off some crazy stuff here and skip across these huge areas. <laughs> no, fuck that shit. I'm... Oh, fuck. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, me. And next to all these floating rails on this island in particular, there's this one platforming segment that leads to a Chaos Emerald. And this whole segment is a really fun ride trying to get to the Chaos Emerald in the most creative way that you can. And the way all these like gear, whatever they're called, things are moving around and the fact we're really high over the water, this game is so beautiful. There's actually another one of these platforming segments on Ares Island, next to one of the Eggman ships, and this one is equally good. Both of these have some of the best platforming in the entire game. Alright, we gotta go find Knuckles. Oh, well. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> Alright, now we have everything that we need to go against the Titan. Ah, but of course, we have to do the puzzle of this island. Alright, let's see what this one's like. Oh. Why is this, like, a billion times easier than Kronos Island? Anyways, we meet up with Wyvern once again, and we have to climb up one of the towers to meet him at the top. And again, it's a pretty fun platforming segment, and then Sonic grabs onto Wyvern, and then he makes a... red trail of vomit. That's actually disgusting. And then Sonic runs on said vomit in a quick-step section, and we're finally in reach of the Emerald. Come on. You can do it. <sighs> Jesus Christ. And here we are again with another Titan battle. And I think that out of every single Titan battle in this game, the scope of this one is by far the best in the whole game. The massive desert that you've been exploring for the last several hours. Now, you're tearing through this entire island as Supersonic as you fight this huge ass beast. I think that was a perfect way to cap off Ares and everything that you've done on this island. And this boss actually requires you to use the parry if you ever want to get hits on him. He fires out a bunch of missiles at you, so you gotta deflect them right back at him. And again, once you get close to him, you can tear him apart with all the moves that you have so far, because now you have a lot more moves than you did on Kronos Island. And I think that once you parry one of his attacks, you enter this cutscene where Sonic grabs him and swings him around until he throws him into a canyon. That is badass. And again, we have the Psyloop. The first time that you Psyloop him, both of his arms get trapped in chains and he isn't able to move. But then, when you Psyloop him the second time, then the chains go around his neck and he screams in agony as you fuck him up. God damn, this is a pretty memorable moment to me. Because actually, I was on a football trip with my high school team, and I think my reaction in this picture is very telling as to how much I enjoyed this. It was the championship game we lost. And actually, let's talk about that music. This is another fantastic song. However, I don't think it's as good as Undefeatable. I only have one problem with the song, and that's the fact that it only has one chorus. Now, it's a very good chorus. It's a very long chorus, actually. It goes on for like 40 seconds. It's great. But I find this song very hard to sing along to, because most of it is instrumental, which, yes, I adore that. The, the song is great. Like, this is, this is definitely an S-tier song. But I feel like they could have implemented the chorus in a bit more, like how they did with Undefeatable, and another song that we will discuss later. But yeah, this is an amazing boss. And it finishes off with Sonic opening Wyvern's mouth, and the rest of the missiles go straight inside of him, and it caps off with this. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. 